Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Tonight we're going to build a super sleek sand my knife. We got 15 and 20 for the core layer, that's our shiny layer. 1084 for the outer layers, those are going to etch real dark. It's going to give us a super dark, sleek contrast. I've already got these ground clean and cleaned off with acetone. So next I'm going to weld them up, then we're going to get to forging. So the key to doing sand my with no flux at all is this right here. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to weld up all the way around your billet so that no oxygen can get inside of your billet. And then you can forge this thing with no flux whatsoever. We're at an orange heat right here. It kind of looks a little yellow on camera, but it's really actually orange. So we need to get that up to a yellow heat so that we can forge weld this billet. This is where I've made my mistakes before. I didn't get my billet hot enough. You know, you just gotta make sure that you just let it soak and you get your temperature all the way up before you try to forge weld it. Got a board because my anvil's really cold tonight. So we're just gonna pull this out. We got a yellow heat. So to be completely honest, I'm not so sure that using this wood was a good idea. It certainly filled the shop full of smoke, and it's also a fire hazard. It may help to set welds. Like I had a lot of viewers tell me to try this the last time. This will probably be the last time that I ever do it. As I'm forging, each time that I put my billet back into the forge, I rotate it 180 degrees so that I'm equally forging each side. As you hammer on one side, you're going to notice the center layer starts to move towards the anvil. And you really want to keep that center layer trued up to the center of your billet. So it is important when you're making a three layer billet to go ahead and try to forge it equally on both sides. Now that I've gone ahead and used my cross peen hammer and created some deep valleys, I'm now planishing the billet flat with a rounding hammer. And that's making the whole billet flat again and it's stretching the billet out farther. The rest of my forging here, I'm really focusing on just trying to get the billet flat on both sides and drawn out to the same thickness from one end to the other. It's going to make making a knife blank out of it much easier if your billet is consistent from one side to the other. I do plan on leaving a rough forged section um, near the ricasso and the guard area so I really don't want to have to take too much material off with my grinder. When you need a third hand, this is a cool trick. There you go, you saw what I did there. If you have a thick apron, this doesn't hurt at all. You could just take your material and you can pull it right up in between your legs and you can hold your material with your legs and that frees up both of your hands to operate tools while you're forging. This is a cool trick that I learned from watching master blacksmiths in their shops. If you have your anvil mounted at the correct height, this is a breeze. This puts your work right at the perfect height for you to pull this up in between your legs and it gives you that third hand that you need when doing tasks like this in the shop. So 
So I went ahead and thermocycled this billet and brought it all the way back to an annealed state so now I can begin to work it. I'm going to go ahead and cut the handle off real quick. I'm using a chalk pencil here just to outline my rough template. This is just an idea of a blade shape. I'm going to take it over to my grinder and we're going to whack this thing out next. The whole rest of this process I'm going to breeze through. My channel is chock full of videos about how to make stock removal knives. That's basically what's going on here from this point on. And you guys didn't come here to see how to make a stock removal knife. You want to see the sand my process. So here I am. I'm grinding the profile. And here it is. Completely profiled. Now I'm going to go ahead and use some layout die. Now is the time where I'm going to mark my grind two lines for my bevels that I'm going to grind. I have decided that I'm going to grind a swedge on the top of this knife. So you'll see I'll go ahead and scribe a line on this side and on the top of the knife as grind two lines for my bevel and my swedge. And this will be a fully sharpened swedge. I really can't express to you enough how important this step is right here. You can make a knife other ways, but this is how you make a really good knife and you can make sure that the cutting edge runs right true down the center of the knife by doing this right here. And here's the beveling jig right here. I use this on every single knife. I'm gonna put it in this fashion right here and what that does is it's gonna give me a good place for my plunge lines. And you can see I bump that jig right up against the edge of my platen each pass and it establishes a really good grind line where my plunges are gonna be. I use it for this side of the bevel and then I'll flip it over to the angle that I want on my top swedge and I'll grind the top swedge in the exact same fashion. So we got a main bevel that comes up to here and then we got a false edge right here that we swept into the tip. Now this is, uh, I wanted to keep this tip nice and thick for stabbing and puncturing motions. So that's why I didn't go real crazy with grinding this farther down the blade because I wanted to keep this nice and thick up here. I really like to use this chain to preheat my oil. I saw Slavic Telly doing this and I thought it was genius. I picked it up and I've used it ever since. It works great. I like to use a tube in my forge when I'm heat treating knives. It does two things. It keeps your knife from being blasted by the direct flame and it also creates a more even heat to heat treat your knife blade. The knife has been fully tempered in the oven at 425 for two hours times two cycles and we're ready to go ahead and finish grind it. I went ahead and finished ground it and now we're going to start hand sanding. I've thrown it on the hand sanding jig and here we go. Starting at 220. We got this pushed up to 500 grit. It's looking really nice. All our lines are nice and sharp. I'm super excited to see what kind of figure we have on this blade, if any. You know, this is a sand my project, so we're going to go ahead and do some ferric chloride and distilled water. Oh yeah, that's going to look real neat. All right, I'm going to get it kind of scrubbed off a little bit. I just take four out steel wool and just clean off those oxides. That's good enough. I don't need to do a deep edge on this because it's not Damascus. I'm not polishing top layers or anything like that. I wanna clean off my 15 and 20 layer real good. I'm gonna clean off the top oxides here. I'm gonna dip it 
to just wash it off in the acid and then we're going to throw it in hot water and put a highly concentrated mixture of instant coffee in it and that's going to darken this 1084 layer what we have here is our knife blade I want to show you what it looks like right after the edge all right so there's where we're at after the edge super cool it's got the figure we were looking for right across it but I think that it can go way better so we just got a cup of hot water cheap instant coffee a nice heavy solution of it. And now, what you've all been waiting for. Oh yeah, that's cool. Let's bring it in close here. I wanna drip this coffee off because it's so strong that it will stain my hand. Oh, that's neat. I never would have thought that my rough board section wouldn't have darkened with the coffee. That's kind of a neat contrast. Oh, that's cool. I'm trying to get some light on it. There we go. Oh yeah, that's awesome. That's going to be a really sweet blade. This rough forge section, I never ever suspected that it wouldn't take the darkening because that's 1084 on top and it didn't darken. It kind of left a cool contrast, I have to say that. I'm happy with it. I just really wouldn't have suspected that. I would have thought that would have been just as black as the 1084 on the bevels. I suspect that the reason the bevels get as black as they do is because I take them to such a high grit. Uh, finish and this is rough forge has probably got some mill scale and stuff well it won't have mill scale because I clean that off I don't know why it doesn't accept the coffee darkening that's neat though that's really neat make sure you come back for part two I'm absolutely gonna blow your mind with the handle on this knife